Hey folks, how's it going? This is Iron Seagull here, and welcome back to my expansion pack refresh idea series, where I go through each and every expansion pack released so far, and suggest ideas for how they could refresh the expansion pack if it were to ever happen. With the biggest refresh video out of the way so far in the form of Island Living, we now discovered that University has room for improvement. Discover University, I think, actually is one of the better expansion packs for The Sims 4, but there are a few things that hold back my enjoyment and from me using it a lot more than I do right now. Well, aside from the bikes anyways, I use those all the time, especially coming from someone who desperately wants cars in the game. But the first thing I want to suggest is to resolve my number one pet peeve with this pack. And it's the fact that Sims progress through their university semester while you're off playing as a completely different household. And oftentimes when I switch back to that university household, they've already finished the whole semester without me and they get a B grade and it's like, would you like to sign up for another term? And it's like, oh, oh, great. <laughs> I'm guessing for those of you who just play with one family per save, or you played a lot with story progression in The Sims 3, you don't really care about this, but for me, this is so, so annoying! <laughs> because typically when I play video games, I don't just stick to one character, I feel like that's boring. I often switch between a lot of different characters, though yes, I still play some more than others. So I do that with The Sims as well, where I have so many households in my save, so naturally, I like playing as a variety of different households. I just don't want to feel like I have to be forced to just stick with one sim for a pretty long time so that they actually get a decent grade. And so that I can actually see my sims progress without me missing these major events. There's also things that can come up, like say if I am playing as my university student, and then all of a sudden it's the weekend and the Finchwick Fair is on, so I want to switch over to my sim in Henford on Bagley and enter the chicken fair. So then there's things like that where it's like, even if I miss one day with my university sim, then that can already just do like a number on their performance. So my actual suggestion to fix this is to have in the options menu, a button where you can turn on and off university progression for inactive sims. That alone would improve the pack so much for me. Also, the class schedule should have its own panel instead of being shoved in the career section. Another thing that would also drastically improve this pack in my opinion is just less rabbit holes overall. At the very least, have a graduation ceremony that we can participate in. Because right now, your sims just go into the arena and you can hear graduation ceremony like noises coming from the inside but you don't really see anything happen until the very end where all the sims come out and they throw their university caps into the air. So there is at least that we can see, but it's still just, it's so boring to me. <laughs> I think they could really do that a whole lot better. One thing that University and The Sims 3 had that the other Sims games don't is some of the classes being playable where you can actually watch the sim in class. And I really wish that was also in The Sims 4. Sure, it was kind of boring in The Sims 3, but that doesn't mean that they can't improve it. I remember talking about this in videos when Discovery University was about to come out, and it felt like as if my post-secondary experience was a huge anomaly, because I wasn't just always sitting in class taking notes and trying not to fall asleep, there was actual, like, discussions and interaction and hands-on things. Like, especially when I was doing my journalism classes, we had classes where we had to actually put together a news show and have hands-on sessions, like, with learning how to use the camera, the video editing software, and, like, how to kind of, like, speak better, all that sort of stuff. So I guess it would be hard to go into that much detail for every single course, but still I think it would be great if there were some where you could actually interact more. Even in the trailers, you can see there are parts where they're in a robotics lab, but it's not actually a class. It kind of makes you think it might be. 
I guess technically there is the robotics organization where you can do this stuff out in the open. So I guess that's how they got away with this and it not being outright false advertising. But I'd still love to see this sort of stuff be part of the classes too. I'm guessing with how The Sims 4 works though and how Brightchester is already set up, it would have to be kind of like the active careers and get to work where you have to go into a location where you can't really normally access it through manage worlds or build mode unless you actually follow a sim to class. But also it could help make that more optional because I know there are some of you who really don't care about that and rather would send your sims off to the rabbit hole, especially since it can make playing with multiple sims easier. So yeah, I think it should be optional, not forced, but I would love to have that option of more realism. Also, for when you do send your sims off to the rabbit hole, I find it so weird that you can't just click on the rabbit hole and have an interaction that says send to class. You just have to cross your fingers and hope that your sims will actually go to the class on their own. I found that just such a weird and it just feels so sketchy, so I guess this could also be a really golden opportunity to fix that problem. Also, why don't have the sims go inside still before class starts because it was especially bad for my vampire students where you'd have to try and not burn in the sun, so don't go to class too early. Thankfully, one location that's not a rabbit hole is the cafeteria. I think there could be a couple of minor improvements because three food options still seems a bit limiting. I get the idea, but I still think maybe five would make a little bit more sense and also, I think we should be able to have our sims use the drinking fountain so they can grab drinks too, because with that cafeteria object, they're only decorative. I barely use the university organization since I was already spending so much time on my sims classes, but I did play with the order of enchantment, and one thing that I think could make them even cooler is that once you get to the maximum rank of that organization, you would unlock usage of this castle here that's just scenery right now, but if they did make this usable, even if it was through another sort of like secret lot off screen, then I think that could be just a really fun way of making this even better and maybe even making it feel a bit more like The Sims 2 Secret Society since that's basically what the Order of Enchantment is. Segwaying more into activities, I think kids should be able to use the ping pong table. I know this is not a kid focused pack at all, but still, like, it just feels weird to me that they're not allowed to use it. And with the servos, I think some improvements could be made to them, especially in terms of customization. Because compared to especially the plum bots in The Sims 3, the customization is so lacking. You just have a few preset options you go through with the social interactions menu and that's it. So I would like to have that level of customization back where there's an assortment of different body parts you can customize your servo with, including the classic look because it's just like, it's hard for you to even really call them servos when they look absolutely nothing like they did in the previous games. Now we move on to the world of Brightchester itself. I would like it to feel more alive in general, because mostly I'm going to talk about Gibbs Hill, but even on the campuses I don't feel like there's just enough sims walking around. Though maybe it's because I don't have that many sims living in Brightchester right now, but even still, I would expect more townies to just fill the void. But I also wish in Gibbs Hill we could live in at least one of these row houses, because it makes this section of the world feel particularly hollow but if we could live in one or two of these, at least as a sort of like apartment shell, I think that would be really cool. I'd love to have my Sims live in those. Now onto the free update portion. I actually came up with more than I usually do for this bit. So I would like to suggest the social networking skill from The Sims 3 to return, because it does not make sense to lump that in with charisma. I mean, I should know as a YouTuber, you need more than just charisma to succeed. And also, I think we should have a, an actual visible, customizable Simstagram. Even with Snowy Escape's trailers, they kind of had like a little Simstagram looking thing, but that's not quite in the game. There's a couple interactions that mention it, but we don't really 
see it for ourselves and being able to customize the layout of it or be able to type posts or see other Sims' posts. So I would love to be able to do all of that. It would also help the game just feel a lot more current. Also, online dating, I think this would make a lot of sense. But what does not make sense is that toilet stalls are exclusive to Discover University. Just such a bizarre thing to try and sell the expansion pack with. So this is actually one scenario where I'm like, yes, just put it in the base game. Maybe to balance it out, they could have a couple of new toilet stall designs in university. I'm not really sure what they could do. Maybe there's just ones they could have that are more run down or more fancy. Same thing with facial piercings. There should be some in the base game. They don't need to take all of them from the expansion pack, but maybe they could take a couple and then also add some new ones in the update. But of course we have to talk about the bikes. They're not technically exclusive to Discovery University anymore, but still, I feel like bikes should be in the base game, but with some improvements. This is getting into a bit of a Generations wishlist territory, but I think kids should be able to ride bikes, but also have to be taught how to ride them and have like the training wheels at the beginning, and maybe even have toddlers with the little toy tricycles. I think that would be super adorable. Even though this is extremely unlikely to happen with a Discovery University refresh, I thought I'd bring it up anyways because this is the pack that bikes first came back in. But if bikes ever do get patches of the base game, it would be kind of cool if we got a new bike design in Discovery University, maybe a more modern sleek one that could go with the atmosphere of Foxbury Institute. So that wraps up my ideas for a Discovery University refresh. It definitely did already do some interesting things over the previous games, such as not having to live in the university world in order to go to university, and the school rivalries between the two campuses, I think that's really cool, and also the elective system, I already really like that. But feel free to let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to see refreshed with Discover University. So the next one I'm going to cover is Eco Lifestyle, that should be pretty interesting. So be sure to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with my latest gaming content, including life simulations and more. So I will talk to you all later, and have a great day. Thanks for watching!